Hey y'all, it's your boy Rick McLaren as you know it. Strength, Courage, and Wisdom every Wednesday at 9 a.m. now. That's a new time every Wednesday at 9 a.m. We are producing this show. We are on Facebook Live. We are on Mixed Station Radio, Mixed Station Live app, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts, all under Mixed Station Radio. Listen, guys, before we're just Facebook Live, but you heard all the other stations that we're on, we need you all to tune in. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Strength, Carriage, and Wisdom on Wednesday at 10 a.m. with Rich McLaren and Lucia. We are so excited that you are tuning in to join us on this morning. How are you doing, Rich? I am good, Lucia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, everybody, please tell a friend, share with someone, tell them. Um, to join in today is going to be a powerful show. Um, as you know, we got a new format, um, and me and Lucia are just happy to share that with you. At this time, I do have to do something. Uh, we shared last week that I have some sponsors. It's very important that I mention my sponsors real quick, and that's Opair Law, MGM Haberdashery, Cashland Apparel, Cigar Diva, Sterling yeah. Associates, Prominent Home Inspection. I am empowered. Food for thought. Lucia, I mean Lisa's luxury consignment shop. Today is her birthday, so everybody get over there and shop with her. Happy and birthday, electric, Lisa. And electric butterfly. So I had to do that, man. We gotta do that, man. And we are now accepting new sponsorships as well. Please email us at strength, courage, and wisdom Wednesdays at gmail.com or just make a comment and say, Rick, uh, uh, hit me up or DM me or DM Lucia and see how you become a sponsor of the show. Hey, Mom. Hey, Carolyn Walker. How are you? So we're excited about today. Today's going to be a great show. Lucia, are you ready? I am ready. I am ready. Good morning, everyone. I just want to say good morning to my friends. You know, I got a great village, um, Rich, and they're joining in this morning. I love you all. Um, happy birthday, Lisa Shannon. You are wonderful. I appreciate you. So, Rich, you know I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're starting something new. Lucia said last week, we got, Rick, I need to get a little bit more organized. So we're going to do news and current events at this time right now. So right quick, though, I'm going to bring you up to speed with a couple of things. As we said before, we are doing sponsorships and we are doing speaking engagements moving forward. Lucia and I, together or separate, whatever the case may be, but I've been doing it for a while, but I never announced it on this show. So we, we are available for those things. We are going to start a book club. We're going to have a book a quarter. And I shared with you last week, our first book is going to be um, Childhood on Fire by my girl, Talisha Hunter. It's on Amazon. I am telling you, get this book. I read it in within three days. It's 196 pages. It is a great read. It's empowering. I can't wait to have her as a guest in October to talk about that. So we're going to have that from October to December to talk about this book. Um, we want you to get out and vote. Oh. It's imperative that we get out and vote. It is imperative that you get. That's registered. right. G, uh, Greater Baltimore Urban League is having some registration uh, um, stations around the city over the next few days. We're asking you to go to those stations and get registered if you're not registered. <laughs> Yesterday was National Registration Day. We want to say, everybody, get out and register. <clears throat> I want to say this, we, we, we reached 200,000 people died of COVID in 2020, man. It, it's a shame. And it's all because of leadership. It could be less. We were going to receive, we were going to have many deaths, but not 200 something odd thousand. Believe me on that one. Uh, but because of leadership, and that's why we need you to go out and vote. I want to say, man, our condolences to the Ruth Banner Ginsburg family, man. We want to say, hey. You've done a yeoman's job. You represented the women well. You represented America well. You represented the court well. And we want to say thank you for your service. I want to say happy birthday to some special people for me. My girl, Colleen, my man, Chico, my girl, uh, my, my man, Gucci, Greg, Greg Holly, and then my girl, Lisa Shannon. You guys need to go to Lisa Shannon's Facebook page and buy something from her. She has a shop online now on Facebook. 
It is beautiful. It is great. And we need you to attend. Do you have any other news, Lucia? Um, yes, actually, I do, Rich. It's a brand new day, and I'm grateful. Somebody tell the Lord thank you. <laughs> the news is we are alive and well. We are awake. We have um, survived COVID-19, the coronavirus, and a crazy president. I believe we got every right to be grateful. So that's the news I got this morning. I am happy. <laughs> That is beautiful, man. That is beautiful. I want to say hi to a couple of friends, man. Marcus and Cherie, my mom, of course. Laverne, I saw her last night. She was looking beautiful. Her and her, her boyfriend, Tommy, were looking good. They went to dinner last night. It was beautiful. Good to see them. Dawn, Dawn Covington, hey, Dawn, how are you? Vivian Gross, listen, guys, I want you to share this with your friends. What we're going to tell you about today and talk about today is going to be very informational and informative for you moving forward out of 2020 into 2021. So, so it leads me to what we say. So we, like I say, let's see, let's get me organized, guys. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what we talked about last week. We talked about last week about getting a little normal, getting back to some kind of normal. We know normal is not going to be the same as what we had in 2019 or early right. 2020, but we need to get back to some kind of normal. And we talked about that last week. Now, this week, we're going to talk about the planning part of this. It is important that we start planning now and getting ourselves ready for 2021. It is a lot been learned in 20, 2020. We're going to share that with you, and we're going to hopefully move forward in 2021 with a good plan to go forward. So with that said, as you guys always know, we always start with a couple of good scriptures to get things going because we believe the Bible is the, is the footprint or the path or the direction or the road that we should always follow at all times. So, Lucia, what's our good word for the day? Absolutely. Uh, the scripture is going to be found in the book of Philippians, the third chapter, the 13th and the 14th verse. And it reads, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, Paul wrote um, the book of uh, Philippians and I like his analogy here. He uses it and he puts it in the context of a runner. A runner runs a race in order that he might obtain a prize. And so he says he presses toward, I'm gonna forget what's behind me. If a runner is running a race, he's not, he can't not look behind himself. He must look in front of him, right? And so I like how he used it. He says, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God. I desire to go forward. It is my goal, my desire, my aspiration. And I am going to put my will, my effort, and my energy into moving forward and not going backwards. And the other scripture, Richard, I'm going to tag on to that, is that while we, while we do press to go forward, we must set goals. We must have a plan, right? We must have some objectives. And so Abaca 2 and 2 says, write the vision and make it plain and put it on tables that he that reads it may run with it. And so these scriptures relate to each other. So I can forget what's behind me, but if I don't write a goal, I don't know where I'm going. And so it's very, it's very important that as I do forget my past, and I do aspire to move forward and not get stuck in 2020 and all the things that have happened, um, the negative things that have happened. But hold on and, pr and look at, hold on to the, what is positive. We got to check our mindset, where our mind is in 2020. Sometimes we, we got and found ourselves, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you talk, Rich, because I know you're on the edge. We find ourselves in a place where we can get stuck in misery because of all the pain and all the death and all the negative things that have happened. But it's incumbent upon us to stay positive within ourselves because it's the positive aspirations that we have that promote us to move forward. So uh, and, and I appreciate that you, you, you hit the nail on the head. And this is what we're talking about, guys, is never too late to start planning. And if you don't plan, you plan to fail. And I am a, I am, I am, I am a, a witness to that. Many of years of my younger life, I didn't plan, and guess what? I failed. I started planning in early September for 2021. I started last year um, 
<laughs> started last year. <clears throat> Um, uh, planning early, so I'm asking everybody to start planning earlier. And, uh, and what that scripture said was basically say, "Hey, listen, 2020 is almost behind us. Right. And as it goes behind us, you got to start looking forward. And in your order to looking forward, you must start planning because things, even though they're not the same, they are still the same. Meaning that you have to have the ability to change what is in yeah. front of you when you move forward. So listen." So the second verse is write the scripture. You guys know I'm a proponent of this. You got to write it down in your plan because you need a visual aid to help you stay on task and stay focused. So we're going to get right into it. So you guys know I always talk um, straightforward to you all. Corona, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, the Roni, the Rona, whatever it, it, it's been here. But it has done some things for us that I think we need to we need to take heed of as we plan moving forward in 2021. It has awakened our re resilience. It has it has awakened within a lot of us, period, saying, hey, I can get through most anything. And we've been through a traumatic yeah, that's right. thing. It has awakened our strength. It has made us stronger as a people and hopefully as a family, as a church unit, and as a person. It has, it has strengthened us all. It has awakened... <coughs> It has waken our thinking out of the box to get things done. We know we cannot do them the same way we've been doing them. So therefore, we have to think of another way to get it done. It, it created a new creative spirit within us that we never thought we could have. A lot of you guys thought you wouldn't make it through these last six or seven months. But Lord knows you have made it through. It has, it has awakened a will, a will to continue to keep going. So I take the positive out of COVID. Those are things I see, right? And I want you to start corralling these in mm -hmm. in your in your planning phase for 2021 because you're going to have to call upon these things, these things I've just talked about, again in 2021. The second thing, racism. It has awakened our consciousness, right. which is a blessing because a lot of us were sleep slept. Sleep slept. It has awakened our sense of pride again because we as people had lost our way. And we are now getting back on a little bit of a track. And I thank the young people for that. It has awakened, racism has awakened our fight again. Mm -hmm. We're willing to go to blows. We're willing to argue. We're willing to stand for something. It has awakened our ancestors' spirits. For what they have done for us over the years, we're now doing for them now. It has awakened our roots. See, these times have all, have all not been parallel. It's not for nothing. It's for something. So when you start planning for your 2021, you have to start incorporating what you've learned through these hard times. Mm -hmm. Some of the skill sets, some of the things we learned. So here's a couple of things I want to talk to you about today. In planning for 2021, I want to say I am planning for 2025. You must plan out and then come backwards. So I know what my goals are for 2025. Now I must start enacting a step-by-step -step plan to get there in 2021. So what I've done now is I reviewed Number one, review the struggles, the ups and downs, the successes, the virus, the racism, the not going to work, the employment numbers, all this stuff. Review it in your mind for 2020. Just look at it for what it was and what you did and where you sat and where your position was at. I want you then to review the skill sets that you are now a new at that help you get through those struggles, those ups and downs, those successes, non-successes in 2020. Because those skill sets are new. Believe it or not, you won't believe it, but I know a lot of you folks don't understand what I'm saying here, but you have learned a lot in 2020 about yourself. You have learned that you are resilient. You have learned that you can find a way out of no way. You have learned to lean on God more than you ever did before. You have learned to work from home 
which you thought you'd never be able to do. You didn't have the concentration, you didn't have the discipline. You have learned to go on church online and still pay your tithe. You have learned so much in this year that you got to take these new skill sets and pivot and use them for your advantage. Don't forget them. They're new to you. So in 2021, when you do your planning, I need you to incorporate these new skill sets that the coronavirus has gave you, that the racism has gave you. Call upon those strengths in 2021. And I'm going to give you a quick example. If you're a person who in 2020, your goal was uh, hypothetically <coughs> to be a manager in your job. And you're down, you know, you're just a basic worker. You want to be a manager. I am telling you now that I believe if you got through COVID in some kind of shape or form or fashion that you still hold, that I think you can be a vice president or a president of a corporation or organization of that organization you're working for. I need you to think, start thinking bigger and better because you can do it. I know you can. It's in you. My slogan is, stays the same, man. Strength, courage, and wisdom, it says it's in you. And what these, with coronavirus, the president, racism has brought out in us is what's in us already, innate in us to come out. We got to call upon it. So you got to review the struggles of 2020, the successes, the ups and the downs all around. Then you got to review the skill sets you utilize to survive. To get through the times where you, you stress the meal, or you stress the bill, or you or you stress the opportunity, and, and call upon those skills, or you made a way out of no way, or you 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 you, you started a small online business, or you you start selling food out of your kitchen, or you started helping the homeless. Whatever you did, mm-hmm. that skill set, call upon it in twenty twenty one. You got to write it into your plan. <clears throat> You have to write this down, though. That was a big scripture. That's why I love to see her, man. She's always on, we're always on point, even though we don't talk. And I wrote this down. I said, I always write everything down because visual aids are very powerful. So what I'm doing now is I'm doing my 25 goal, 2025, and I'm back walking to 20, saying, how can I get to that 2025 goal over the next four years? We just said a whole lot. I haven't said in the past, and see, I always did a year to year goal. Right. I had a long-term goal, but I never wrote them down. But now I'm writing a long-term goal because I need some measurements. I mm-hmm. need measurements in my life. Right. So, a <clears throat> couple of things I, I got to say to you that. You are writing your own story right now. And awfully, oftentimes it's based year to year. I need you now to look at it a little bit longer. So you, when you're writing 2021, you're thinking about 2025. What is the outcome you want in 2025? What is that outcome? So I say to you that the goals you write are just the means to an end. There, there's a means to an end. So, but if you're not disciplined, if you're not focused, all this is for naught. And I say this a lot to you all. Eight percent of everybody who write goals or resolutions or objectives for the following year, 8% of Americans only succeed. The other 92% fail. They stop within the first three months of going for what they know. We're trying to stop this. You have learned a lot in 2020, and we need you to call upon what you've learned and incorporate that in your goals for 2021 to achieve not only the goals that you missed out in 2019, but the goals you wanted, I mean, 2020, to the goals you want to do in 21. So my my good guy, um, Tony Robbins, says, stay committed to your decisions, but stay flexible in your approach. See, I like that. I like that, to, Rich. I like that, Rich. Don't go nowhere. Don't, don't, don't go nowhere with that. Say that one more time. Stay, stay to committed one more time. to your decisions, mm-hmm. but stay flexible in your approach. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. they're just going to throw you curveballs, you, like Corona, like racism, like the White House, like the president. But you still have to stay committed to your decision. You just got to be flexible how you get it done. That's right, because you may have to adjust. Adjustments may need to be made. And you said a whole lot. You said an awful lot of things. And first you, you talked about being awakened. You know, wake up. You know, 2021 is around right around the corner 
So we can't get stuck in 2020. Yes, we started 2020 with a lot of aspirations, a lot of desires, a lot of goals, and we had no idea that we would be in the midst of the type of situation. But we have been awakened in many different ways. And like you said, one thing that is really important is that we learn who we are. We learned who we really are. You know, how strong we are. You know, um, I remember we used to say, y'all can make a dollar out of 15 cents. Some people may learn how to make a dollar out of 15 cents in the, in the midst of this. You know, we are stronger. You know, we are more aware. And, you know, we have to, it's important, Rich, that when you talk about goals, you talk about being committed but being flexible. But we also got to be realistic. Now, I want to I got to balance that because I'm a woman of faith. And so uh, when I say realistic, I mean that it has to be in line with what um, it has to be in line with what I know is God's will. I can't make something that's completely unrealistic and out of the will of, of God for my life. And I'm talking for me. So if I set a goal, I know that it must be in line with his will. Right. Okay. And another thing, when we set our goals, they must we must clarify them. We must clarify exactly what it is. We must be clear and not just write stuff down. Our goals must challenge us because they have to stretch us beyond where we are now. Right. And then we also have to in writing down our goals, we got to we got to learn how to track our progress. Absolutely. You gotta measure. You gotta have some measurement in place. Absolutely. I um I um I, I want everybody to grab a pen and paper now or, or write this down. I want you to I want you to write these things down now. I want for 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 the next for five years out. I want you to write down what my family looked like, what my health was supposed to look like, what my spiritual life should look like, my finance looked like, my family looked like, and my relationship looked like, and then what my service looked like. For five years down the road. So I'm gonna say hypothetically, I'm gonna say, let's say family, let's say I'm young and, and I'm not married yet. I wanna be married in five years. I wanna have a kid in five years. If I'm mm-hmm. And so now you gotta figure out, going back to 2021, what do you have to do yourself to get ready for that type of end goal, the end means, right? So 2021, you set yourself to get yourself a little financially stable. Maybe uh, make some investments, get ready. Maybe look for the right woman to associate with. Things of that nature. Planning for that five-year end goal to achieve it at the end of five years, but achieve what you have going on in 2021. I, it's just almost like if you want to make a million dollars in five years, you're not going to make it in 2021, but what you can set a goal of is I want to make 100000 in, in 2021. And I'm going to turn that 100000 100, in 2022 to 500,000. Then in 2022, I'm going to turn to 750. So you make it realistic and make it simple. If you get a million, you get a million, 750. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully in five years, you have a million dollars. But what you're doing is you're setting those expectations of yourself to get it done. Um, and I challenge everybody to list them out just like that, man. And not in a certain order, but family, your health, your spiritual life, your finances, your family, your relationships, and your service. So I want to be on four boards, directors, in in five years. So next year, I have a goal to get on one board. I have to get on another board. Because I'm on boards already, but I mean, I got to get on another board. Set the long-term goal, then step back and make it achievable over the years. I am telling you guys, if you start writing this down, you write the vision, it will be plain, not only to you, but to others. Make yourself accountable. When you write it down, you post it. If I could turn my camera around, well, I have it on my wall. Right. My goals for 2019. And yes, 2019 is messed up. I have to figure some ways around some stuff. I I achieved some goals, some stuff I didn't. So I'm going to add it to my 2020 and have a different approach because it's different times now. Rich, can I go back for a second? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Habakkuk says, write the vision and make it plain that he that reads it may run with it. That he could be me. Yeah. Or she could be me. 
Meaning that, because you know, sometimes we can't, you can't share your goal with everybody. So be very, very careful who you share your goals with. You right. know, they're not for everybody. When we write the vision down, it's so that we can see it. And so when we see it, then we can measure that goal and we can track our progress. But um, it's imperative that we write it down because if we don't write it down, it becomes a dream and nothing comes to a sleeper but a dream. And so when we write something down, we write it down, then like you say, you get a track record, you be, hold yourself accountable and do whatever if you're accountability partner. It's very important also to have accountability partners in, in life. You know, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your best friend, you know, whether it's a mentor, whether it's your pastor, it's imperative that you have an accountability partner where we're not just flying through life doing anything that we want to do. And we're not be, we're not being held accountable. So we can't do we, we should not. We should not do that at all. I, I just wanted to um, go back and talk about that because it's important. You can't share your dreams with everybody. Oh, no question. There's no no question there, but you got to share it with somebody because you can make yourself accountable. Right. I, say, I say to everybody on this call, man, this is one thing I'm saying is I, I'm here to, we're here to share information to hopefully that you'll take a piece of it and do something with it. Because I'm telling you, this COVID, even though we have lost a lot of people, a lot of people have died, it's yeah. almost been somewhat like a blessing to some people. Because you had a time to be isolated. You had a time to think. You had a time to be creative again. You know, imagine you're in your house and you haven't played Monopoly in years and you haven't played Space or Uno with your kids. You haven't had a conversation at the kitchen table with your kids. You haven't had dinner as a family for years because you guys have been in and out running. But all of a sudden, COVID hit. Now you're stuck with each other for six months. And you start getting creative. You start doing things you used to do with new things. Now, new things is what I'm talking about, along with the old stuff as well. But the new stuff is what I'm talking about. We got to take that new initiative, that new drive, that new learning thing we just learned and take it into 2021 with a vengeance. Absolutely. There's a lot I have learned in seclusion. There's a Absolutely. lot I have learned being by myself in this home, in isolation, isolation for six months. Absolutely. It was easier, Rich, for me to um, determine what I wanted, what was acceptable. It was easier for me to determine my boundaries as well. And um, it gave me an opportunity to stretch. It gave me an opportunity to stretch. Um, and I just want to... Um, when you mentioned that about being creative, I know of a business who um, they were they were a um, wedding planning business, and of course, you know, weddings weren't not going on in COVID, so they altered how they did business and they started creating these themed date nights, and they were it was beautiful. Wow, so that's my things. Like, don't get stuck. We can't get stuck in the way it used to be and have our expectations on what used to be. We have to be more creative and allow ourselves to be stretched because 2021 is not going to look like any other year we've ever had. You, you were telling but our you, attitude, attitude is everything, Rich. You're telling the truth. So I got a friend. Attitude is everything. I got a friend, Dave, and he's a, he's a caterer. Uh, he's a side, side guy, job catering. And he was struggling because his season just went past, you know, for all the cookouts, the proms, all that kind of stuff. Right. All that stuff went by. And he had to get creative. And he, he put up uh, lunch bag lunches for drive-by graduations. He was doing them 10 a week. You know, it was incredible. Right. And, but he had to think out the box. How can I still give him my service but give him to him in a COVID-free environment? Right. A COVID way. And I'm telling you, with that creativity and that mindset – and I want to share with something to you guys. I'm saying this here. We got to start. When we start pivoting, recognize how you pivot, why you pivot, and then where that pivot is taking you to. So this 2020 year with COVID-19, with racism to the height it is, to this president doing what he's doing, with your local stuff that's going on, People are pivoting every day, trying to figure out what's their new niche, what's their new, new goal, what's their right. direction, because they realize that going forward is not going to be the same. 
So in order to do that pivot, you have to start planning. And you must plan now. If you wait, I hate to say it, I'm a timetable dude. If you wait till January to start planning, you're, you're just behind the curve because I'm going to beat you every day, all day. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I need you to start planning now for 2021. Start setting them goals, man. Start setting those resolutions, those objectives, whatever it is you got, whatever format you want to put it in. But I need you to start setting it for five years out, and then I want you to walk them back to 2021 to what you got to do in 2021. I want to say hi to a couple people. Excuse me. Let's see. Uh, Larry Wright, man. Thank you for joining the nails. Thank you, Vernet. Vernet, KB, Cam Bryce, Jason. Oh, Sheree, my girl Sheree Moses. What's up, baby? Kathy, how are you? Evelyn, Tori, how are you, man? How are you guys all doing? I want to say hello to all you guys. Please share. Thank you for joining. And listen, in, at the uh, top of the hour, at uh, another 10 minutes or so, we're going to have you be able to call in um, and ask us some questions about planning. Uh, the number is 855-493-6499. Please feel free to call in. We want to hear from you. Uh, it's important that we hear from our audience and that they know that we're listening to them as we move forward. Um, so, Lucia, yes, I, I think there's, a, there's another one thing I want to say that I want to mm -hmm. say. And this word came up yesterday. Uh, I was watching um, a, a Zoom meeting with someone else, and uh, Ms. Sharon Page said this yesterday. It is time for us to be intentional in everything we do. Absolutely. I need everything. you to be intentional in this planning stage, man. And you got to be committed, man. If you set up all these goals and you're just interested in these goals, they're going to go away with any excuse that you can come up with. But if you set all these goals, you're committed and they're intentional, and there's a rationale, reason for these goals, you will begin to hit your goal one by one. Now, every goal ain't going to be achieved. I'm going to put that on the, on the table. But the fact you've written it down, the fact that you thought it through, you will be blessed in some shape or form or fashion. It might not come in the blessing you want, monetary, might not come in the love life or the, the picket fence or the house, but it will come in some sort of shape or fashion. Absolutely, absolutely, Rich. Um, you know, I, I'm just stuck on attitude and it's just in my spirit, you know, 2020 has, we're being realistic, um, being honest and, and very transparent. 2020, has been a rough year for many people, um, uh, financially, emotionally, um, some physically. Um, and then, you know, we're in the midst of September and it's um, Suicide Awareness Month. And so we don't want to be remiss and not recognize that, you know, uh, the effects of 2020 has hit people really hard in many different areas. But you have the power and the ability to um, change the trajectory of things. No matter how hard, no matter how um, negative things have been, if you grab hold to a positive mindset, because you can only set goals if you are looking forward. If you are stuck and you're negative, if you're, if you're stuck in negativity, then you can't set anything because you're still in the past. And so we just want to encourage you today um, in the, to look at, really, really look at what your attitude and your mindset is about what's happening around you. Allow it to have, allow things to happen around you, but don't let it to determine what's happening in you. Because in you is strength, courage, and wisdom, as Richard said, but you've got to let it come out. You change what happens on a daily basis based on what you believe, based on what you say, and based on what you receive. I, oh, I often say it this way. Say what you want until you see what you say. And so if I write my goal down and I keep repeating it, and I keep repeating and it becomes repetitive in my mind. I get up every day and I say, I'm just going to say, I'm going to learn how to be a um, TV, TV producer. How about that? That's a good one. I'm going to learn how to be a TV producer. I'm going to produce a television show. If I get up every day 
And I say that over and over and over again, I'm eventually going to believe that. That's another reason why writing your goals down is important. Because when you write them down, don't you don't just write them down, but write them down and revisit them often. You've got to look at them often and you've got to see them so much so that you ha- eventually you have to write, you have to go back and look at the page because it becomes a part of you. I can tell you this, so guys, uh, guys and gals, 2020 has been horrendous, but I share with you some of the goodness that came out of 2020 uh, with COVID, with racism, some spirits, some awakenings in your soul that came out of COVID. And I'm going to repeat them because it's very important to me. I think COVID awakened a lot of a lot of things in a lot of people. First, it awakened your resilience. I'm going to say it one more again, your resilience, mm-hmm. your ability to go through something and go through untethered. You still came through the other end. That's right. That's resilience. You came through strong with strength. You got mightier and mightier and mightier. You never let, let it get you down. You you think you thought out the box for the first time probably in your whole life. You said, I gotta do something. Let me figure out how I'm gonna do this. And you start being creative. And it shows that you still have that will to go on. I, I gotta say that, man. And if you take those kind of notions into your 2020 20, when you write your plan and you think about what racism did to you this year, to a lot of us, man, and I, I, you know, my father and mother been fighting politics and this stuff for a long time, but I've never really been into it like I was this year. But I am telling you, it awakened my consciousness, it awakened my sense of pride for my people, it awakened my right. pride again, it, wake, it awakened my ancestors and my family spirit again, and it awakened my roots. And I'm telling you, if you take these things and start incorporating that into your 2020 vision again, I am telling you, you will be blessed. And I, I say that with power. So think about this. So now let's see, you know this for a fact. Right. Yes, a lot of churches struggled in 2020. Mm-hmm. But what did they do? They assessed their situation. That's it. They got resilient. Yeah. They got strong. They think out the box. And they're delivering services online. And, and some. And, and we do driving. And they, we do driving. We do driving. Some are doing this. So what, 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 what we learned, we figured out a way to get it done. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? You know, somebody made a comment um, last week, said that they attend, the blessing of it all is that they can attend multiple services on Sunday. Yeah. That they could never, ever visit other churches and other ministries, but now they have the opportunity to visit multiple ministries and, and be in the comfort of their home. And so... Those are blessings. So for me, I look at 2020 is that, yes, there's been an adjustment that's gone on. But the word of God is getting out um, mainstream media more than it has ever been. Perfect. Ever been. Every example of what I'm talking about. Let's see, think about it. If it was for COVID... We were going to the edifices. You'd be in your silo. I would be in my silo. Everybody right. be in their silo. Look at it now. It's open door policy now. Everybody can see it. it I'm not condoning this thing, but what it did, it, it got us to be start opening up our eyes and being more creative. Stop being mundane. Stop regular regular life. You had to be creative moving forward. Man, if look, I can say this, I need mean, everybody. If you got any questions for us, you got any things you want to ask us, put it in the comment, or you can call us on eight five five. Four nine three six four nine nine. I need somebody to call in, man. We want to hear what you have to say about planning and moving forward. Any questions for us in regards to this? This is our new format. We're welcome this format. We are also on YouTube. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on iHeartRadio. We're on Spotify, and we're on Mix Station Radio Live right now. And uh, I want to thank Marcus and Wilbur for that, man. Thank you guys for that. Uh, but listen, Lisa, how are you? Good morning to you, Lisa. How are you, dear? Um, once again, it's Lisa's birthday again, so I have to holler at her all day. You know, she'll be like, say happy birthday. Happy birthday, Lisa. <laughs> happy birthday, Lisa. Happy birthday. But you know, but, um, Rich, this is, this is a very, very um, important. I would say this was an important um, broadcast today because we were at ease. We were comfortable. We were um, used to a um, 
a, a ritual, if you will, mm -hmm. a practice of how we performed before COVID-19. Now we're open. We're, we're literally open. We had to get open to new ideas. We had to get open to new avenues to achieve the goal, to get the word out in the kingdom, to be able to do more. You know, we can't, it's like, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a warrior. So um, with everything, I, I feel like I, I won't be defeated. I, I'm just not gonna be defeated. So in everything, I'm going to look for a new way, a new avenue to make it better, to get stronger, you know, to, to be more relational, you know, and that's the one thing I would say that we've been challenged with is being disconnected. That's one of the challenges, but that's, we don't have to be disconnected because there's still phones. We still can pick up the phone. We can still call. We can still check on people. We can still do all of those type of things. We just might not be able to be in close proximity right now. But listen, I'm believing by faith that COVID gonna leave here just like it came in quietly. I didn't tell you what I, I, I um, uh, when you were saying that I was thinking about is it's something about being forced to do something. We were forced to make changes in our life. We were right. forced to, to do things differently. And I think it's a blessing that we were because like you said, there was a complacency, yes. there was a laziness, there was a mindfulness, yes. there's a regulatory part of it as well as this regular routine. But there are now people thinking out of the box, doing PPE things, making their own masks. I go on and on. People yep. are just being creative and I love that spirit. But what I'm saying to them about that spirit, it can dull down when things get better. So you start writing them down now, you're, you're, you're learning it's what you learned during this period about yourself that made you the person you are now doing this crisis, that you utilize what's in you now that you just learned about and you write it in your vision going forward to 2021, man. I am telling you, you are going to be blessed abundantly. You will be That's blessed right. abundantly. That's why I say. So listen, guys, we're opening up the lines now. Uh, we got 15 minutes. We want to hear from you. We want to see uh, what you have to ask and what you have to say as well. You can put them in the comments or you can make a call to 855-493-6499. Absolutely. And we're talking about planning and going into 2021. We're not forgetting about 20. We're going to take the lessons learned and the skills we've learned and the abilities we've learned, the creativity that we learned, the stretching of a dollar that we learned. Right. Out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That we've learned right. all the right. cut costs. Like, let me tell you a perfect example. Another example, right? What people are understanding now, which is a good thing and a bad thing, there will be a time where most companies want to look at their internal costs to run their business. Mm -hmm. And the they're doing it now mm -hmm. because of the effects of the business, right? Right. So you start trimming fat and making yourself a lean, mean fighting machine, selling right. machine, storing machine, productive machine. It, this is what this thing has made us do now. And it's important that we see this for what it is. Even in your household, you start you start making dishes that are maybe can last two days versus a night. You know what I mean? You, do, you start doing things that you normally wouldn't do or you haven't done in a long time. It's awakened a lot of good spirits in us, man. And I want everybody to use those spirits and those skill sets to move forward. I have a I have a comment, Rich. Okay. Uh, my cousin from Rona, Virginia, okay. um, talks about um, what about settling for mediocrity in your life? Wow, that's a good. Listen, <laughs> that's that's a cardinal sin. <laughs> that's a sin. You know, yeah. mediocrity does not. Um, well, you can achieve some things just on average, if you will. But who wants to just achieve things on average? Why not be great? We all were created to be great. We were all created in the image of God to be great, to achieve great things. And like I love the slogan that strength, courage, and wisdom is in you. But you've got to believe that it's in you. You've got to press. And pressing, you know, when it talks about this, if you think about the olive, the, the olive that makes the olive oil, you know, we cook with and everything, that olive gets pressed 
to get all out of it. And it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And we have been made to be uncomfortable in 2020 so that the oil can come out of us in 2021 and 2022 and on and on so that we can be greater than we were. I'm coming out of 2020 greater than I went in 2020. My mindset is different. My attitude is different. Nothing is impossible. Where my faith was on 100, it's on 300 now. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, the, the, the sky's the limit. You know, there is no roof on the house right now. I look at how God has been a keeper all year long. If all the things that we've gone through, we've got the highest number of unemployment ever. And God is still keeping people. He's still making a way for people. People are still eating. You know, there's more love that's even being shared, spread on Facebook than I've ever seen it before. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot less negativity, even on Facebook, than ever before because we're seeing the importance of how you can touch a life and you can change a life. How you can just do one thing to make a difference in someone's life and it makes their day and how important the little things matter Absolutely. it's the little we've been made to look at the little things you know to measure the little things and they matter all the little stuff matters Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want to say thank you for your cousin for that question, because that question is right in the heartbeat what I'm saying. America is geared for you to be mediocre. As long as you set and you go to your job and you will continue to do a nine to five, you're always going to be subjected to some kind of meteorocracy. You're right. going to be. There's no question here. So what I'm talking about today, setting goals and planning and, and using skill sets that you never used before, that you'll get out of that, that process by writing down in your plan how to get out of being regular, being mediocre, medium, medium, being neutral, being unseen for real, right. to be honest with you. If you write down a plan how you're going to progress in your life, and that's what you want. If you want to be mediocre, uh, that's fine too. I mean, if that's what your goal is and, and continue to do that. But if you write down a bigger plan than what you are today, you will become, you'll come out of that. You'll rise out like a phoenix. You'll rise out, man. Um, and, and, and Rich, I want to go back to what you said about the five year. I like how you said it because he said, um, and to say thank you because that hit me hard. What what you said was very important about five years because you write five years, but then you work your way back. And so what you do is you create a progressive plan, but you say where I want to be. That's right. But now in my progressive plan, I'm going to say this is how I'm going to get there. It's That's a plan. powerful. It's a plan. That's powerful. <laughs> it's a plan, man. It's That's a it. plan. It's a plan. And That's listen, it. guys, we love you to call in, man. Make a comment, ask a question. We appreciate you, man. We're here for you. This is our new format. We thank God for this format, and we think it's going to be a blessing for you and a blessing for us. But I share with you that, and, and, and with that question he asked about mediocrity, a lot of us are still dealing with mediocrity. And if you think about how they're herding us around back in the day. This was so funny, right? Just literally mm-hmm. seven months ago. Right. The, the, the traffic jam on 695 because they herding us. The, you, downtown, packed, the street packed, lunch right. hour packed. You know what I mean? Five o'clock traffic, back. Right. Not, not anymore. It's a totally different world now. So, so see, so now you can, like I said earlier, you can write your own story now. You can start developing a new story by writing a new plan. And I, I know for a fact, and I always know, I always judge everything by what I go through. And I know Wilbur, Marcus, yourself, everybody can probably say this, that during this year, we have probably been more creative in a lot of things we're doing that we've even done before. But now we've done turn it, tweaked it, and made it better, and looked right. at it better, looked at it different. And that is, that if you're if you working all the time, you're constantly hustling, you're constantly in traffic, 695, 95, you got lunch, and you, you bell ring, you got to check the clock and all that kind of stuff. You would not have the time to think it through. Mm-hmm. But this has given us, given us the time. And, and I tell you, times like this, we got to take advantage of, man. I want to say, hey, Lawrence, how are you? Lisa, you guys got to go to Lisa Luxury. Kasami shot. She's on me, as you can yeah, see. Yeah, it's right? her birthday. <laughs> it's her Let's birthday. celebrate her on her birthday. If you got any <laughs> questions, man, any questions, man, please, uh, please put those questions. Now, Lawrence got one, man. Let's see what he says. 
uh, what would you suggest to someone who says they want to succeed, but constantly, what's the word I see, over more, bring up their barriers to their success? Wow. That is, wow. A, that's, okay. a, and that's what I'm saying. See, Lawrence, we were just talking about this earlier, right? See, people that say that, you know, anybody, next time somebody says they want to do something, you want to say, are you serious? Are you really, are you interested or do you want to do this? Are you committed? Mm-hmm. And then if they're a friend or a family member, if it was me, I'll make them write it down. Now I witnessed it. Because if you're committed, nothing won't stop you. But if you're just interested in it, you like it because it's cute, any win or blow, any sign, you're quitting, you're done. That's it. That's so it. When bar- they make up these barriers because barriers are anything you do in life, man. But if you're committed to walk through a wall, you're going to walk through a wall some way or other. You're going to figure it out. And you're going to chisel it, take one brick down at a time, whatever the case may be. But barriers are just excuses for people who really are not committed to what they want to do. Rich, who in the world sets up a barrier for a goal? Come on. <laughs> you know, you said it. It's like interest. If you're interested, you know, like you said, it's just an idea. If you're committed to it, you all in. And you're willing to go all the way. So then it's not a goal. So if you if there is if you set up a barrier in a goal, then it's nothing more than an idea. It's not a goal. That's because a goal is something you reach and you strive for. You know, um, and I understand and understand barriers um is is roadblocks. So how am I have a goal and I already start the goal with a roadblock? But well, he says that, so he says, they say they want to succeed, but constantly bring up their barriers. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you're a friend, I would say to you, let's talk about the barriers, okay? And then you, right. knock, you help them knock down those barriers. You know what I mean? Because some people have some fears in their life, man. You know, you can't do nothing about, only someone else can help them get through some things. And, and once again, with prayer and, and friendships and things like that, we can help them get through the barriers if they're real. Now, if they're make-believe barriers, that person is just not going to not going to make it through this at this particular point in time. But what I find out when most people do that is because of fear, and a lot of people are scared to succeed to be successful because they've never been successful before. And mm-hmm. I say to you that if you're a friend and if it's a family member or something that like you might be able to help them with those barriers, some suggestions to get around those barriers. That's what I'm talking about, man. Thank you, Lawrence, man, for that. Yeah, question. tear them, tear them, bar- tear them barriers down, Lawrence. <laughs> Lawrence can Tear do it. Down. Too. Lawrence can do it too. He know he knows what. Tear the barriers down. But there's some people. There's some people that are so entrenched, like you know, they're thinking they can't get out of their own way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And 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 there's a lot of people I know like that. They think they know it all. They think they got it figured out, and yet still they never succeed because these barriers come up. As soon as the barrier comes up, man, you start quitting. And this is why it's almost like you say when you when you're in church, man, you got to be rooted. Mm-hmm. You gotta be committed to whatever you're gonna do. You know, right. rooted in it. So any wind comes by, any obstacles, any barriers come by, you're grounded. You're gonna you see, get Rich, what you're gonna get. That's and- why I believe we got attitude because attitude is everything. Attitude determines our altitude. Our altitude. How high are we gonna go? How much we're gonna achieve is gonna be determined by our attitude. If we have a positive and optimistic outlook on things, then most likely. That's the type of results we're going to have. But if our mindset is already set on defeat, then we might we want we won't be able to reach it because we've already limited ourselves. What I'm saying about attitude is to challenge your own attitude. Challenge where you are in your own thinking and believe in yourself because I'm just a firm believer you can do all things. All things. The scripture says it very well, and I don't have no problem saying, you know, we, we base the scripture. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I'm a firm believer. There is nothing that I cannot do. And this one thing, you know, you know we, we, this show is, is versatile, man. We, we talk about Bible. We talk about street. We talk about right. politics. We talk about relationships. We talk about everything. And But I know for a fact that during this COVID seasons, I am telling you, there's more people that have came to God in some shape, form, or fashion, with prayer, yes. privacy, and online church song, whatever the case is, during this season, man. Right. And, and now, remember, we're going back and talking about the bringing up a conversation we had back in March or April when we were on the air about mm-hmm. these churches, man. 
the, the, the cream is rising to the top on these churches, man. The cream is rising. These boys and these gals who are delivering the word and delivering a message that is reaching young, right. young old people and making it very uh, entertaining and very um, open and inviting, man. They're, they are grabbing the masses right. because they created a plan. They, they sat down and said, how are we going to make this pivot? We don't care about the obstacles. We don't care about the barriers. We got to figure this out. You know what I mean? We got to figure out how we get to the parishioners, how we get to this congregation, how we can open these doors of this church 24-7, 365 days a year. We got to make it attainable to them, and they have done it, and they have done it in great shape and form and fashion. And, yes, there's always casualties in anything we do in life. There's always going to be death in anything we do in life. So some churches have gone to the wayside. And some churches have prospered, and that's just life in itself. You know what I mean? How it goes. But that's one thing I do believe has happened too, as well, during this cold bad season. I want to say hi to my boy Chris. That's Paramount um, Home Inspection. Like one of my sponsors, Chris Cobra. He's on the air, man. Anybody want to reach out to Chris if you're getting a home inspection? If you if you need to buy a new home, you need a commercial property inspected, whatever the case, go holler at my boy Chris Colbert, man. He's a sponsor of us. Been a sponsor about a year now, and thank you for joining on, Chris. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to call in before we end here? Um, uh, 855-493-6499. I want to say you guys got to tune in next week. Um, next week, man, I got a great, great guest coming on, Mr. Donnie Glover. He's a political pundit, man. He don't pull no punches. He's a bad boy. We're going to have him on the show for the whole, the whole show. We're going to be talking about national politics. We're going to talk about, of course, our local politics. We're going to talk about the Dems and the Republicans. I think there's a there's a um, um, a misnomer or not an understanding of two, 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 two differences between the two parties and why the two-party system was even created. And that's another issue. And he's going to tell, educate a little bit on the Senate versus the House a little bit and why the Senate has this power to do what they're doing with the, uh, the Ginsburg situation. Um, and we're going to share that with you next week. So Donnie Glover is going to be our guest next week. We're asking everybody to please share that because Donnie, Donnie is a powerful man. Y'all know Be More News is his, uh, is his, his medium, his media, media medium. Uh, you guys should check him out on Facebook Live. Um, uh, be More News, uh, Donnie Glover. Great guy, man. You guys all know him in Baltimore. He's going to be on our show next week. So we're looking forward to that great conversation. Um, so listen, we got two more minutes. Anybody got another question? Anybody have a call? Make a call. Somebody call that phone. <laughs> While we waiting for that, Rich, we waiting for somebody to call that phone. Get a call. We have a caller. All right. We got a caller. We have a caller. I can't hear. Him. Can't hear. Him. We waiting for our caller. Yeah. Hello. Can't hear. Him. While we're waiting for our caller, I just want to—I'm just want to um, give you this, Reg. Um, I, I found this online. It says your walk motivates you, your spiritual gifts enable you, your passions fuel and focuses you, your personality expresses itself in you, your experiences help to develop you, and your capacity to love expands you. And I thought that was very, very good, yeah. very, very relevant. But it's all about us ourselves individually are we ready for our caller yes he's still working i think yes i think yeah the caller's ready okay thank you for calling hello hello, hello? how are you doing wonderful yeah. how are you I'm doing great. This is Larry White. Hey, I Larry. To say, Hello, Mr. I White. To say, yeah, I wanted to say thank you for talking about that mediocrity. People need to know that, you know, one of my favorite scriptures is Jeremiah 29, 11, And it says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans for hope yes. and the future. And let me tell you something. In this time, if you know that we don't know what is coming about in the rest of 2020. We don't know what's coming about in 2021. That's in the future and leaning on the Lord for that plan that he has for us, knowing that you're going to prosper and not be mediocre is powerful. 
And that's, yeah. uh, that's, you know, that's what we should be facing every day. Absolutely. Man, thank you, thank you so you. much for that. Listen, for I know the plans. Listen, Larry, come on here. He said, I know the plans I have for you. I love that scripture as well. Plans to prosper you. And so that's why I said mindset. We've got to believe. We've got to have a mindset to believe those things that God said is good for us and good about us. And those things that that's the truth. God does know the plans. And those plans are to prosper us. Absolutely. Well, Larry, I thank you for that. Larry, thank you so much for the question. Thank you for the scripture. Thank you for your word of encouragement, man. I appreciate you, man. No question. I owe you a cigar next time I see you, man. Uh, that was my first call on the show, this new show that we're starting. The first call was Larry Wright, my Apple Larry Scott. Wright. A good friend of mine. Hey, listen, Lawrence, man, you know, keep doing what you're doing with your ministry, man. I know you've got it, man. Um, you know, you can always call me on me anytime you need to, man. That's a long time friend, man. Me and have been friends since I was close. I was born pretty much two, three years old. Me and him met, and we've been friends ever since. We will continue to be friends. Wow. Um, no question there. Rhonda Harris, thank you for turning it, turn it, tuning in. Charlotte, North Carolina, I really appreciate that as well. Quadre, what's up, baby? How you doing, man? We got to recognize our, our guests and our family, man, as they come on board. Let's see. All it. right. You got somebody you want to recognize? I do. I want to recognize Pastor Valerie Walker, okay. um, Reverend Curlin Walker, Odyssey mm-hmm. Dean, a childhood friend, Minister Anita Adams, Marco Brown, uh, Viva Gross, uh, Pastor Troy Randall, my cousin from Roanoke. Thank you all so much for joining this morning. I tell you, Rich, my village, I love my village. I love my village. I believe that we are individually um, people. We are because of the, we are who we are because of the individuals that we have around us. Absolutely. We have the individuals that pour into us and that strengthen us and that encourage us because none of us are strong all the time. Everybody needs somebody, right? Mm -hmm. And I just thank God that he's been gracious in his goodness and his mercy to me to surround me with some good people. So in closing, guys, I got a little saying I want to say. This is by Dr. Stephen Covey. Um, And this is probably, this this is apropos for what we talked about. Mental creation always precedes physical creation. You have to, and Lucia's been saying it all day, you have to have it in your mind. Mm-hmm. you got to have it in your mental that you can succeed, that you can get better, that you can do better. There's a better instance for you. There's a better situation. There's a better life. There's a better goal. There's a better plan. Once again, Dr. Stephen Covey said, mental creation is always precedes physical creation. So until you manifest it in your mind, it will not come out in the physical. Until you figure it out upstairs, and you want it, and you write it down, and you say, yes, I'm committed, you will stay mediocre. And mediocre right. is not a place for the big guy. I can tell you that right now. That's, <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> it. So, so I say to that, man, listen, we God bless you all. We want to say thank you for joining in. We're looking forward yes. to seeing you next Wednesday. Our special guest will be Donnie Glover next week. You better tune in if you want to learn something about politics, especially local politics, and more important, national as well. Yes, in closing, I'd like to say again, thank you. You continue to pray for us as we will pray for you and your families and your strength and um, your endurance in this season. Thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. God bless. You're welcome, kid.